Last episode, we talked about the diverse types of assets you should include in your investment portfolio. Growth, value, blend, large cap, small cap. But maybe you're thinking this all sounds a little complicated. Well, I'm Savannah Taylor, and that's what we're covering today on Financial Literacy 101, making long-term plans and writing it all down. As you get older, you're going to be naturally more risk averse. Seeing a down year in the market hurts a lot more when you're 55 than it does when you're 25. So as you get older, you should rebalance your investments to include more controlled assets. But how often should you rebalance? Well, that's a tricky question. If you're regularly adding money to your investments, which you should be doing, it can be easy to direct new funds towards whatever asset class you need to add to your portfolio. But maybe you're only contributing once a year when you've set aside your yearly savings. That's smart. Cut down on transaction costs so you don't have to buy in smaller increments. How are you going to remember your plan, though? When you turn 38, do you buy 80% equities and 20% bonds, or is that the ratio for someone turning 48? It can get overwhelming fast. My first suggestion is to write it down. Paul is going to tell you more about the importance of writing down your plans. And Mike Tyson, not my favorite character in the world, a boxer, he said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And the reason I use that quote is when you're invested and you have stocks in your portfolio, and this really happened to people on October 19th, 1987, the market went down 22% in one day. Now, might that be a punch in the mouth? And let me tell you, uh, particularly to somebody who had low risk tolerance, wasn't willing to lose very much, and to lose 22% in one day, a lot of people just pulled their money out of the market and said, never again. Well, I think Mike Tyson is right on. And what I want to make sure is that you figure out how to make sure that when you get punched in the mouth, you've got a plan and a plan that's written down. On top of writing it all down, what if we could solve all these woes with one product? We've been preaching the benefits of mutual funds since day one, so we could go that route. But we run into the same problem. Mutual funds are meant to target the middle of the road investor. We want a mutual fund that grows as we grow and changes as we change. We need a special purpose mutual fund called a target date fund. They're a relatively new product, so you can't find target date funds everywhere, but most financial services companies are starting to offer them. Vanguard, Fidelity, JP Morgan, and USAA are just a few of the firms that manage target date funds. The date we're targeting is your retirement. If you plan to retire at 65 and you turned 20 in 2015, you need to look for a 2060 target date fund because that's when you'll be retiring. Hopefully. If we taught you anything, you're probably thinking the exact right questions. What's the load on the fund? Is it actively or passively managed? How diversified is the fund? Is it all one size and type of stock or different companies? What's the track record of the fund? Morningstar.com, a website we've talked about before, can help you answer all these questions about any fund on the market. If you do your due diligence, you can find a fund that meets your needs. Ideally, something with a low load and passively managed. In a perfect world, it would be an index tracked fund. The fund is continuously rebalanced by the managing institution to represent the growing risk aversion of their clientele. As you get older and retirement approaches, the fund will start to acquire more and more safe investments. In short, they'll buy more bonds. The key to these funds is to keep contributing. Every month or every year, put away money into the fund. Be consistent. 
if you can, increase your contributions by at least 3% a year to keep up with inflation. If you're playing to win, you'll increase your investments when you get a raise at work. Remember from episode one, learn to live on what's left over. Target date funds aren't just my idea either. You'll see them widely accepted on Morningstar.com. Paul agrees too. They are relatively new. They make the process of investing so unbelievably easy. I mean, literally, they can be built so that you can invest in a target date fund from the day you start working until the day you retire, and then it continues until the day you die. Now, that's some target date fund that knows enough about you to be able to make all those decisions. Today we taught you about a relatively new investment vehicle, target date funds which are meant to automate the process of rebalancing your portfolio as you get older. If you find the right target date fund, which should be close to the year you plan on retiring, you can ease the stress that comes with managing your investments. Whether you decide to use a target date fund or homebrew your own mix of asset classes and bonds, you should have a plan. Not scratch into the back of a napkin, but a written plan. Something you can look at tomorrow, next week, next year, or 20 years from now. Future you will be thankful. I'm Savannah Taylor, and this has been Financial Literacy 101.